This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Alleluia. fullness, the wedding feast. 
God's plan formed from of old, indeed from before the foundation of the world, faithful, true, and wonderful. The one to whom all authority in heaven and on earth has been given will be united with his bride. And the king, the father, sends out a gracious invitation to come to this reconciled and reconciling dinner party. And the invitation is rejected. The parable of the wicked tenants took salvation history from Old Testament times up through the time of Jesus and the church. This parable is a parallel to that. Messengers are sent and sent again. They are rejected. And those who reject the message are, in fact, themselves then destroyed and replaced with others. But this parable takes salvation history from the time of Jesus to the end. To the, the great and promised feast. Who would spurn such an invitation? Well, the gospel tells us those who have something better to do. Maybe they have some task they really need to accomplish. You know, you've got to cross off everything on that to-do list. Maybe they're just amusing themselves to death with their smartphones. Whatever it is, they can't be bothered with the invitation to this feast. They've got better things to do. And there are those who are so threatened by this invitation. Perhaps their, their confidence that they can secure their lives in this world is threatened. Perhaps just their desire for pleasure or power over others, whatever it is, it's just too strong. They are threatened by an invitation to a banquet. And so they kill those who bear the message. The king will not have it. He has them killed and destroys their city. Now, we don't like that. We want to hear all are welcome. Right? We want that unconditional acceptance. We want to hear everybody is okay just the way you are. God loves you and so do I. <laughs> Well, God loves you more than I do because he won't let you stay just as you are. He calls for the fruits of repentance. We want to be accepted just as we are. But we are only saved by our acceptance of this banquet which cost the Son his life. The banquet comes because Jesus has died for us. The parable of the tenants tells us that the son is rejected and killed. That's the crucifixion. The lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. In the parable of the king's son's wedding, the marriage supper of the Lamb, the risen Lord, comes to be joined to his bride, the church. A feast of peace and joy where the shroud of sadness is swept away from all the nations of the world and death itself is overcome. Now, clearly, God has not brought us to this place just yet. Current circumstances in the world make it hard to believe that there will be a feast for Israel and all the nations surrounding her. 
we are in the peace of God, will vanquish all sorrow, wipe away all tears, and finally vanquish even the power of death. He hasn't brought us there. But that's the point of Jesus' authority now. He spreads a table before us even in the presence of all our troubles. The crucified and risen Lord comes to us in his word, in, with, and under the bread and wine to give us a foretaste of that feast to come. To strengthen us for perseverance in bearing the fruits of repentance even now. Even now, he comes to us. Even now, the, the song of the ruthless is stilled for at least an hour. But there is yet one final stumbling block, the wedding garment. Those of us who are glad to accept God's invitation to this feast, nevertheless retain a little bit of that idea that we should be accepted. We should be able to come as we are. But that's a dangerous thought. That's like the person who says, give me just what I deserve. Hmm. Dangerous. It is the Christ that we put on in baptism who gives us the righteousness of God that covers our sins. That's the wedding garment. That's what empowers us to bear the fruit of repentance in our lives, even now, as we await the final consummation of the kingdom that we see now only as it springs up in unexpected places in our lives. Many are called, but few will receive the invitation. Many are called, but only some will put on Christ, the wedding garment. But we are assured that if we trust this promise, if we trust the authority of the one to whom all authority in heaven and on earth has been given, our place at the Lord's table is secure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.